All right, away we go. So welcome to the November 29th meeting of the select board. Uh, we continue to meet virtually only in light of our not friend COVID-19. Uh, let's see, uh, call to order at exactly seven o'clock. So well done peeps, we are on time. Uh, announcements, meetings of the Berlin Select Board are generally recorded for transmission on both the Berlin Cable Access television channel and YouTube. Your voice image and or phone number may be recorded. All right. So first up on the agenda are last week's minutes of November 22nd. Any comments, questions, thoughts, edits needed? Nope. Make a motion to... Uh... Approve the minutes. Second. There you go. We love Scott. Talkie, talkie, talkie. Second. All right. So, uh, I'm so paying attention. <laughs> All right. I, I have a dog destroying a piece of wood just off of my screen. So, I'm trying to make sure he stops at the piece of wood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's put him on camera with us, Scott. All right. Motion in a second. Stone eye. Hawkins eye. Keith eye. All right. Yeah, just right. make that wood is not the furniture, right? <laughs> no, it's not. He brought it in from inside. I grabbed him from outside. I, I, I had problems logging in as well. So I'm frantically trying to get myself set up and he wouldn't let go of the piece of wood. So I'm like, okay, bring it inside the house. And he's now, I don't know where he got it, but he's frantically destroying it. Is I have two, I have two words, bully sticks. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've never heard of them, <laughs> bully sticks. <laughs> so Scott, on the other end of the piece of that wood is in somebody's Christmas tree. <laughs> Just check. No, I, I have no idea where it could have possibly come from. I'm... Oh, God. All right, Mrs. Nardowitz, we are down to item number two. It's going to be a long night. Correspondence. You got me? Uh, just one piece of follow up correspondence. Um, there was an email that came out that I forwarded to the building commissioner um, to address regarding mm -hmm. use of a certain. A parcel, and he has followed up with the resident who sent um, that that email. So I just wanted to let you know that he's followed up on that. All right, Margaret. I know another one came in about agricultural burning, and you had sent it uh, back to Chief Clark to mm -hmm. respond. Do you know if that was ever taken care of, or do we need Chief to follow Clark up? has? Yep, Chief Clark okay. has replied to that person who emailed and he is following up with DEP to make sure he gets it right. He admittedly said he never had this, this issue in his prior um, in his prior town. So he wants to make sure it's done right and doesn't set an incorrect precedent. So he's followed oh. up with her. Oh, awesome. All right. So uh, Peg's favorite one that she always skips over and Chris reminds us, uh, general public comment. We have three folks in the audience. If you have a question, raise your hand. All right, seeing nothing, we'll move on quick, quick. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> oh, you missed your window, sorry. Uh, I'm just gonna put a piece of tape over there so I can't see if any hands come up. All right, so uh, at 7.10, even though it's at 7.03, um, shall we bring um, Eric Eric to the big table? Chief Shartner. Mm-hmm. Well, Here we officially, I think it's I think it's officially acting chief for like another twenty seven hours or so, or something like that. But but all right, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. look at you! How are you, Eric? Good. Good. How are you guys? Good. All right. Away you go. Uh, with your all right, so uh, the month, month of October, report. the department handled 889 calls for service, including eight cases involving criminal charges, 20 motor vehicle crashes, and seven of those uh, were reported to have injuries involved. Did 102 motor vehicle stops and 94 citations were issued. Um, the hiring process for two new, uh, new part-time officers is near completion. Um, I just actually received the last medical form today for the for the uh, candidates, uh, so hopefully all those upstairs to Margaret and Dennis tomorrow for the full packets, everything's done. And uh, we're hoping to get them to start training uh, actually by the end of the week, if possible. Um, also, Hudson PD has allowed us uh, use of their Milo training, uh, which is an indoor uh, shooting simulator. And also uh, we can also use uh, OC spray and our tasers. Um, 
as I mentioned in here, uh, it does come with a cost. Um, we have to buy $2,100 worth of equipment, uh, but in hindsight, it's gonna save probably $1,800 per year uh, in ammunition costs, which have risen exponentially. Um, you know, I think we just got an order in, I think it's somewhere around $5,000, and I think we budget around $2,500 a year for ammunition, but that's how much it's gone up. Um, so, I think it's going to be beneficial for us. It's basically virtual training uh, where we actually are going to be using our firearms without obviously ammunition. Uh, it's going to be set up electronic slides. Um, and I think it's just, it's going to give us real life scenarios that we can uh, actually practice in rather than out in a range and pretending somebody's running at you. Nice. Yeah. Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. right. No. Uh, and also, um, Officer Goulding attended a district attorney Joe Early school safety summit, which uh, was titled Handle with Care Community. Um, so obviously his role is school resource officer. He will have to present that to the school committee for adoption. Uh, it's basically gonna make him a liaison between the, the uh, students and the school district uh, for any issues that arise. Eric, I get a quick question. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, out of the Motor vehicle stops, um, yeah. what percentage would you say was speeding through the lovely streets of Berlin? Um, I could definitely go back on that. Um, usually, um, from what I hear on the radio, most all of it is speeding or um, using uh, cell phones while driving. Oh. So I, 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 it's, probably, it's probably mostly speeding, but also a lot of uh, uh, cell phones while driving. Yeah, it's amazing as I drive around and I look at the cars beside me, it's almost like that's a forgotten law. You know, five cars pass and four of them people are doing this. Yeah, yeah very true. Okay. Any uh, questions there, uh, Chris or Scott or Eric? Um, no, I, the, he, answered, he answered mine. I wanted to know what the Milo was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it would take probably four sheets to ex actually explain Milo in writing. So, yeah, it's just um, basically a virtual reality. You gave, gave a good explanation. <laughs> so after these two part-timers start, what, what is the staffing level? Are there, where are there holes or vacancies and uh, how well, we do it filling those? Yeah, well, um, I think uh, after tonight, I've uh, spoken with Margaret. After tonight, we will have a full-time officer vacancy. Um, which, you know, hopefully we can get posted by the end of the week and uh, get that process started. Nice. Awesome. awesome. But, but as far as part time, we're doing very well. I think we've already filled over 50 open shifts uh, for the month of December. Wow. The board already, the board has already approved um, my notice of intent to appoint the two individuals that are mm -hmm. joining the, the mm -hmm. department. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. So Eric, I think before you go, Margaret, I'm gonna kick this over to you. Um, do we want to discuss the contract now while we have Eric and while we have time before yeah. we talk with Hank? So as I was assigned by the board to negotiate the contract with Eric on the board's behalf, um, Eric and I have met a couple of times on the contract. Um, Eric is satisfied with the contract in its current form. Um, and so I would recommend uh, that if it's still okay with everybody, that the board vote to execute the contract um, with Eric for police chief of the town of Berlin. So moved. Uh, second. All right. Any, uh, any further questions? Again, seeing none. Okay. All right. Um, so, so <laughs> we're going to speed this along. All right. So I'll open up the vote. Stone eye. Hawkins I. Chief I. There you go. Oh, it is oh. official. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. No more yeah. chief enacting, but yeah. it is now Chief Shatner. There we go. Well, um, I think the it says the effective date though is that uh, it does say it's 29th. It's, I thought the last version I saw was the 30th, but yes, good. Yeah. 29th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um uh board, would you like Eric to say a few words as your as your new police chief? Absolutely. <laughs> sure. He has so it prepared. Look at him. Look spot, at him. Right? He has it prepared. Look, really, I wasn't He's prepared, gonna prepare but yeah, let me get the paper. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I just look forward to the opportunity to serve the town in a higher capacity. Um, yeah, I've been here for 26 years, 
you know, I've been a company person uh, through the good, through the bad. Um, the last eight years has been really good with Tom, and I just want to keep that ball rolling. And, uh, you know, as Margaret would say, our contract negotiations, we met twice. I think it was probably the first time was the longest of five minutes. Second time was probably a two minutes. Um, you know, I, I'm just eagerly looking forward to getting this department up and keep going and move everybody within and uh, just make it a happy place, a great place to work. Well, we're definitely happy to have you. I can tell you, Eric, is that I have either, you know, zip down to the dump on the weekends or the uh, general store. I've always been met with good choice, good choice, well done. So, um, uh, definitely, I think we have the support of the town behind us. So, yeah. I, I, I've had 26 years, nothing in my file, no internal affairs investigations, no complaints, you know. So, you know, I think uh, everybody knows I'm a fair person. I may not like my decision, but uh, the bottom line is I'm always fair. Yeah. All right. Chris Scott, anything for uh, our new chief? No, I welcome aboard. I think uh, you've you've done well for the town up to now and look forward to you just continuing that. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for doing the best best you can for Berlin. Absolutely. And Eric, I mean, it goes without saying, if you need any of us, you know where to find us. Margaret's always right upstairs and yeah. the other three are not far behind. So, um, you know, please reach out. Let us know what we can do to support you, support your team uh, here for you always. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Yay. All right. Well, Chief Shatner, we'll let you go because we I, we won't drill you until you like you come back next month when you've been in your right. official role. So, you know, well, this this is your yeah. mulligan. This is your he'll mulligan. Be, he'll be official for 30 days by then. And that way we can drill it. <laughs> oh, all right. Let the notes taking start. Excellent. All right, Eric. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Have a good night. And, uh, thank you. Appreciate you. Have a good all righty. Night. All right. See you tomorrow. So, see you tomorrow. Um, so Margaret, I know that Hank is up at 7.20, but I also see that uh, Chief Clark is in the audience. Can we mm -hmm. take care of the vote to sign the Community Emergency Management Program in eight that, minutes? That would be a wonderful idea, and you certainly could do that. All right, so Chief Clark, come on down. You're the next contestant at this select board meeting. I think before they come up, we should always guess where he is, whether he's at home or whether he's in the office. Oh, he's home. Oh, Hi, Chief. Good, night, good, night. good evening, everybody. Hi, Chief. How are you? I'm doing very well. All right. And hello, dog. Okay. So, um, Chief, you're up to talk about the community emergency management plan, anything you need to add, Margaret, anything that needs to come from uh, your side, directions, instructions, what it's about? No. Um, not, from, not from my perspective. I think that the ESEMP, you know, once it's adopted, and I think Chief could speak to this more so than I could, um, the ESEMP, there is an ability to update and modify the ESEMP as we move forward. So um, if there are any changes that um, are needed down the road, we could certainly do that. So, Chief, for the folks in the audience that um, I know it drives one of them when we start talking acronyms without any information behind it, could you give us like a 30 second overview of what this community emergency management plan is, why it is, who's playing with us, etc.? Okay, it's called the ESEP, which is the Electronic Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan for the Town of Berlin. Uh, we spent a lot of hours revamping it. It was in good shape, but we uh, just had to update most of the stuff and uh, have to send it to you by your board for a review. And it's kind of like a all hazards approach to emergency management in the town. If something goes wrong, it, it defines who has responsibility for it. And uh, definitely uh, is important piece of it is the team aspect with all the departments working together, select board, TA's office and uh, blue team, red team, DPW, all the way down through Board of Health, and everyone's uh, got their functions with it. So it's like uh, it's just something that every community in the state has, and we just needed to upgrade ours. And uh, I thought it came out pretty good. It's kind of like one of those. I think I heard one of you say it's eighty something pages, and it's pretty mm -hmm. dry <laughs> if you're not into that. But it's like uh, it is one of those things. That it, it's like a necessary uh, evil to get done and have done and 
sit with the state and, and it will assist with uh, grants from uh, MEMA and anything that's emergency re, uh, uh, management related. So it's a, it was a great exercise for me because a lot of the things uh, I didn't know and it and opened my eyes to a lot of things about uh, Berlin. So it's like a little, a lot of little things, you know what I mean? That, you know, you know, you get a, get a, a good grasp of a bigger picture, but there was things in there that I didn't know about the community that I gave it the old German Shepherd look when I looked at it and smiled and said, that makes sense why they do that like that here. So it's like, uh, nope, it, it, was, uh, it was a good exercise for me to know the uh, community better. And uh, I think the final part of it is, and uh, is this your signatures on that promulgation. I think, I hope I said that right, uh, sheet. And then I send that off to uh, some uh, regional emergency management person. And, and that's the final thing on the update. And then within another couple of years, we'll probably be, they'll, you know, be at it again, so. All right. So, Margaret, next steps for us is to vote to approve it, and then the three of us need to come down and sign it. That's exactly right. Yeah. All right. So, Scott, Chris, is there a motion on the table? I'll make a motion to approve it, and and in appreciation of just all the work that went in, into it, it's a very detailed document. I, I have a hard time doing more than a half dozen pages in one sitting, but but then it's a it's a, I, I'm amazed at how detailed that document is. Mm -hmm. And I'll second that motion. All right, motion in a second, lots of chats. Uh, Stone, aye. Hawkins, aye. Keith, aye. There you go, Chief. We are good. All right. Thank so, you. Margaret, then, will Margaret this, uh... at, 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 okay, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I just thinking that that at uh, thinking that at some department head meeting it might be worthy of or or pulling together. I just there's a lot of people with a lot of roles in it and how we make sure that everyone understands what their role is. I don't think everyone needs to know super detail, but at least know that they have a role in an emergency. So if something was happening, they might grab the document and pull it out and go, oh, okay, because it's X type of emergency, I don't have a role in this one or. Yeah, Chief has Chief has discussed um, doing this with department heads. So that is, that'll yes. definitely be something up on our radar at a department heads meeting or maybe a special meeting. I'll leave that to the mm -hmm. Chief um, as to how he wants to um, pursue it. Perfect. All right, so let us know. Is it available for signature now? Yes, okay, all right. Yes, it is. All right, so if we can all be down there by like the latest Thursday of this week, that mm -hmm. would be good and uh, we'll be set to go. Thank awesome. You. All right, Chief, you have Thanks, a Chief. wonderful night. It was great to see you and I'd you like also. to hear that. Take care, nice right. to see Take everybody. Care. Thanks. All right, Thanks. bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Ah, all right, look at that, almost right on time. So let us bring up uh, Mr. Hank Naughton. There he comes. Okay, I'm unmuted. We hear you, Hank. And why isn't, let me see. It says my camera's start video. Oh, there we go. You there think at is. this stage of the game, <laughs> you, you would think at this stage of the game, I, I'd be used to it. <laughs> Hank, you had like a slow fade. It was like, here's your voice. And then it was like, Wah! and then there you are. Oh. Especially designed by my uh, uh, my, well my communications team, <laughs> I wish. Well, hey, welcome well, back to Berlin, Hank. Uh, you know, thank you. Great to see you again. I, I still and drive through almost you. every day, so it's uh, but it's I great know, to see all still. all you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. If not, uh, um, if, if not in person, uh, but mm -hmm. virtually. So it, I did. Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, I've, mi I've missed you all. And and I and I say that sincerely. I there's a lot of things I don't miss about uh, the, those 26 years, especially the last couple of years. But there are a lot of things I do miss, and and you're all among them. So it's great to see you, and, and thanks for having me. Absolutely, um, thank you. And let me let me wish uh, Chief Shartner, who I uh, had the pleasure to work with on various issues over the years, uh, the best. And uh, if if I can 
whatever the value of my my 11 years as chair of the public safety committee in the house is uh i'd be happy to uh talk to him at some time and let me wish uh chief galvin the best in his new his new uh, ventures and adventures uh he served the town of berlin well over the years so mm -hmm. awesome uh, a lot of good man. memories with both of those gentlemen um i i appreciate you seeing me tonight mm -hmm. um and uh, as with many communities in the Commonwealth, uh, Berlin has started to have to face the issues of PFAS in the water supplies and costs being imposed upon you uh, at, at a minimum through testing and long term, possibly significantly more uh, extensive than that. Um, I think I described a little bit uh in my last meeting uh we with, with you my my wrap-up meeting my goodbye meeting of what, what i was moving on to and i oh. moved on as a partner with the national law firm of napoli skulnik uh, which is based in new york city but i'm in the process of opening our new england office uh, and i have been uh, since january uh, 7th of, of this year um and, th and that that ended up getting stopped a little bit because i ended up uh, getting deployed to uh, washington dc for three months after the events of January 6th with the security oh. mission. <laughs> so oh boy. I was slowed down there a little bit. Um, but uh, as I, I made a joke, uh, because we were based in the uh, in the Capitol uh, Visitor Center, literally two flights down from the House and the Senate, and I, I, I probably, probably joked a hundred times saying, boy, I always wanted to go to Congress, but I never thought it to be this way. <laughs> so, um, and then when I got back at the uh, at the beginning of April, uh, I really started rolling very quickly with this firm, talking to communities throughout the state in regard to PFAS um, and its impact. Uh, Massachusetts is one of the more uh, progressive uh, and activist states in searching out this um, uh, contaminant in our water supplies, both groundwater, well water, artesian water. In the interim, uh, as you can see here, uh, we had the good fortune to strike a partnership, a uh, strategic partnership on this issue with KP Law, who was, uh, is, is your municipal firm and, uh, of course, enjoys a, a great reputation around the Commonwealth. Um, and we have decided that we will take all of their issues regarding PFAS and water pollution off their plate because this is our specialty. And I often kid, I feel like I'm in the family business because, as you know, my dad ran the Clinton Water Department for 40 years and all my uncles worked over at the Wachusett Dam. So, so these are uh, some of the people I work with, uh, Marie Napoli, Hunter Skulnick, and Paul Napoli. Hunter Skulnick's name could be uh, familiar to you because he was one of the primary lawyers that just settled the $26.1 billion uh, opioid litigation in favor of many, many hospitals and, uh, and municipalities around the country. And that was really just the latest of the work of this firm going back to the 1980s, in 19, actually 1990s, where Paul Napoli led um, litigation against uh, gasoline companies that were leaving remnants in the ground all around the Northeast, which resulted in the MTBE settlement at that time, which uh, municipalities are still applying to out of a trust fund um, and uh, uh, to to remediate uh, their, wa their water supplies bec because of that hazardous chemical. Uh, and Marine Napoli has led uh, litigation in uh, support of families, the victims' compensation to prevent human trafficking, you know, something I actually worked with uh, in the U.S. Army in, in Africa at one point. So it, it was really a tremendous opportunity for me to come into this firm uh, that has uh, represented large-scale um, groups of municipalities uh, impacted by hazardous chemicals and, and other problems over the years. Uh, on the right hand side is our team, myself, Andrew. Uh, we've got so we've got five partners assigned to this, as well as uh, uh, many, many uh, tremendously talented associates. Uh, and the bottom corner there, Sam Wade was director of the National Rural Executive Director of the National Rural Water Association uh, for. Uh, 37 years, and he's one of the preeminent water experts in the country that helps us uh, to uh, uh, go through your results, go through the research uh, on behalf of our clients, and be able to uh, prove to the court the damages that are occurring on behalf 
uh, or occurring to our, our, our clients uh, and to municipalities and water districts around the country. Um, if you go on to the next slide. So we don't, you know, my, my parents would be mad at me if they thought I bragged, uh, was a, a braggart, but these are some of the uh, results of <clears throat> other cases that we've worked on or settled around the country and uh, including being chief counsel in the Flint water crisis up in Michigan, uh, the lit opioid litigation, MTBE, uh, the, a couple of different water um, uh, class action suits, and then this toxic tort uh, and the uh, and products litigation going on uh, in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, where all the cases have been consolidated. Uh, and that is the case I'd be talking I'm talking to Berlin and to other Massachusetts uh, communities about. In, um, and when I talk about bragging, um, this firm has been incredibly successful to the point uh, that, that we are in the ability to take this case on at no cost to our clients, uh, no upfront costs, uh, literally nothing uh, to uh, invest on your part other than possibly some time uh, to help us gather the results of your testing. Uh, but we assume all costs, um, it is, it's a contingency fee basis, but if we don't get you a settlement, then, then there is no, no cost to the town of Berlin, um, which, which I don't believe you'll find elsewhere. Um, so that's kind of one of the, I believe there are five or six elements that really make us a full service law firm, which I'll go into over the next few minutes. Uh, and, and that's the first one. Uh, and, and, this, and the second one being the talent of our, and yeah, we could go on to the next, uh, uh, to the next slide. Um, the second one being the talent of the attorneys that we have present. Uh, Paul Napoli, our senior partner, um, is on the executive committee of this litigation. Uh, what that means is when there's a large case, and this one currently has about 600 plaintiffs, the judge will seek out, and there are many attorneys on both sides, uh, there are 23 defendants, uh, for coordination of the procedures and, and to keep the case flowing, the judge will set up an executive committee. In this case, there are three, to, three attorneys representing the plaintiff side and three from the defendant side. Uh, and Paul Napoli is the co-lead counsel of that executive committee. So he's at the table every day uh, for procedural motions, for substantive motions, motions to dismiss, all of which have been denied um, in, and at the table in negotiations for settlement, uh, which I can't really say a whole lot about, but it, it, I'm not telling any tales out of school to say that they are going on. Um, and uh, these, as far as background of PFAS, um, some groups I talk to know a lot about it. Some are still just learning uh, and depending on, on what you know, um, you'll be, those of you at, uh, on the municipal level, we'll be learning more and more as we go through through the, year, the upcoming year and, and, and in the future. Uh, so there's some background of where it's made. It was first seen in, uh, and I, I just saw Chief Clark, uh, he, I'm sure he knows a lot about it. I have been talking to the Mass Fire Chiefs Association. Uh, it was first kind of seen in, uh, in, the, in the active ingredient in the fire retardant in firefighting foam. But since then, uh, it's been determined, it's, it's rightly called both the everywhere chemical and the forever chemical. Uh, it is every place because the carbons that make it up are such a tremendous binding, do such a great job as a binding material. It can be used for so many things from, and there's a slide in a moment uh, that will show you some of it. These are uh, a, a large group of the defendants. There are 23 defendants in this from Dow, DuPont, Ansel, um, it, that's actually a good thing for our purposes because it's, uh, if, if this is in your water, it came from one of those 23 defendants. Uh, we don't have to go chasing around the world uh, trying to determine who made it because these are the only people that actually ever made these chemicals. So in, in a way, it helps us uh, know who we're dealing with. It also helps the fact that we've got overwhelming, overwhelming information showing that they were aware for upwards of 50 years of the cancer causing and other deleterious health effects of these products and didn't tell anyone until 
uh, a fellow by the name of uh, Rob Ballot. He's an attorney. He he's with another firm, but we do a lot of work with them. Uh, discovered he at the time he was at a firm that worked uh, in and around Dupont, and they discovered that you know, women working for Dupont were having miscarriages or low birth weight children or children with other other uh, birth defects uh, when they were born. And through his his tireless research. Um, he was able to determine it was these chemicals, these these group of PFAS and PFOA chemicals. And if you saw the movie, and if you haven't seen the movie Dark Waters, um, that uh, elaborates on on the first cases that began uh, you know, a decade or more ago, and led by Rob Ballot, who we now do some work with. Uh, we could go on to the next slide, please, Mary. So these are just some of the sources. Uh, photographic equipment, the firefighting foams, stain resistant, uh, the, the fast food packaging that you leave McDonald's or Burger King or, or Duncan with, uh, paint, the nonstick cookware, of course, Teflon was where it was, one of the first places it was discovered, pesticides, shampoo. Congresswoman Dingle from Michigan had, uh, had a press conference a couple of months ago showing that researchers on her staff had found it in uh, mascara and other makeup uh, used by individuals. Uh, so microwave it's, it's, popcorn too, Hank. Mic microwave popcorn. Microwave popcorn. popcorn. Yeah. Um, so this, this is what we've seen in Massachusetts. This is just an overlay. Um, and again, I think one of the things driving DEP uh, and, and DEP Commissioner Marty Suberg is, is we're you know, a big manufacturing state. Uh, we've also got the numerous current and, and previous military bases uh, in and around uh, uh, the state that, that where you find it. Um, landfills, uh, it's, the sources are, are, are many and varied. Uh, and these are just some of the type of elements that uh, have, have been found uh, to be caused by these chemicals, uh, testicular cancer, kidney cancers, uh, immune system issues, uh, I'm very curious as we go forward and see um, research uh, after after the pandemic of how this interacted with COVID, thyroid, the fetal development issues that I discussed about uh, liver effects, uh, and this is just a you know a you know from a three thousand foot level of what Massachusetts looks like. Um, you know when, when we drill down, we're very lucky in Massachusetts that there's a lot of open source data that our researchers have been able to, to determine um, where, where it's coming from. Not, not, not entirely, but, but, but some good data, which, which benefits um, the plaintiffs coming out of Massachusetts. Um, if we go on to the next slide. Uh, and this is a little around, a little more centralized here in central mass uh, around us and where you can see it uh, and where it's popping up. You know, it's 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 not um, it's it's not um, a coincidence that as you see the M MWRA pipeline uh, and, and and the wastewater that heads into the uh, into the uh, treatment plant in Boston Harbor, the three eggs that you see as you fly into Boston Harbor, um, the the water the water actually coming out of the Coabit and the Wachusett Reservoir is very clean, but by the time it gets down there, it has incredibly high uh, uh, a measurement of PFAS that the MWRA is having to deal with as they go forward. Um, we can go on to the next slide. So again, uh, airports, fire training facilities, uh, where it's been used. Now, what I want everybody to understand, both with your board and, uh, and with anybody listening, we are not bringing suit against any fire training facilities or the Department of Defense or or the military in any way, um, because we feel that they were hoodwinked as well as as everybody else, uh, and, and in some ways should probably be on the plaintiff side of this. Um, the the defendants we we strongly believe took to great effort to uh, to to uh, to conceal uh, the problems with their products, and uh, and so just I want everyone to understand we're not we're not going after any local. Uh, uh, local parties here. Um, that bottom slide refers to where the case is right now. Uh, we're very close to having 
all of the discovery, the, the gathering of evidence uh, finished. Um, many depositions have been done on both sides of the table um, and, and, and records, millions of pages of records have been turned in that our staff and that our attorneys have gleaned through with a fine tooth comb. Um, there's no questions there. We could go on to the next slide. Again, this is <clears throat> this is more of a national level. Um, as you can see, it's it, it's every place. I I uh, said to someone earlier today. I I go to a lot of meetings like this, so it's uh, my experience as a rep uh, comes in handy because it's very similar to to board meetings uh, that I've, uh, I've I had for close to thirty years. Um, but I was out last month. I was in presenting to the County Commission of Grand Forks County, North Dakota. Um, and they have some air bases out there and some fire training facilities that have put them at great risk. But it's it's always fascinating when I travel to other parts of the country, which I do relatively frequently with this job, uh, the concerns of the municipal and county officials are, are, no, are no different uh, than your concerns or the Clinton selectmen or the you know, any of the other towns I represented for years and years. So it's... Uh, it's good that we kind of all talk the same language. Um, so one of the things that uh, we have going for us that was referred to there are the, uh, and, and again, I feel it's another one of the factors that makes us a full service firm, is the scientists we have on retainer, as well as the water experts that can help us interpret uh, the results of your testing. And the testing results will dictate what your remediation is going to have to be, uh, and we can work with you on that. And the costs of the testing and the costs of the remediation uh, amount to what your damages are. Uh, and that is uh, where we would seek to get you reimbursement. And I'll explain to you what our vision of that is in a moment. This is where the case is right now and why we do feel uh, that time is of the essence and that, again, without being able to say too much, that settle, settlement talks may um, may proceed quickly as we get into 2022. Uh, the first trial in this case is set for 2020, January of 2023. Uh, 10 cases out of the 600 plaintiffs have been selected by Judge Gurgle, the federal judge, uh, for, for a first trial, what's called a bellwether trial, which uh, is, is a means by which the strength and weaknesses of both sides of the case could be tested. And the 10, uh, uh, plaintiffs that are chosen, uh, the judge feels are indicative of the broader group of those that are involved in this lawsuit. So um, that's January 23. What we've seen in the past, there's no guarantee you'll see it here. Uh, but uh, as with the opioid trial, when you get closer to the trial date, the opioid settlement, when you got closer to the trial date, uh, a kind of a critical mass built up towards settlement talks. And we feel that might happen here. Um, what our vision is, is if there is a settlement prior to trial or a judgment after trial, is that the monies that are provided uh, will uh, be put into a trust fund. And this is what we would advocate to the court, similar to the, uh, the asbestos trust fund or the MTV trust fund or the 9-11 trust fund, uh, which uh, Paul Napoli actually helped administer with Ken Feinberg um, to, the, uh, to the survivors and to the families. And Paul is still on the board of the 9-11 uh, Survivors Trust. Um, it was very important to the firm. Uh, clearly, I wasn't with the firm at the time, but their offices on September 11, 2001 were on Lower Broadway. So they were, they were right in the middle of uh, uh, abutting ground zero. So Paul Napoli's kind of taken, a, taken it on as a cause uh, for the last 20 years. So we do feel that uh, time is of the essence. Um, the... Government contractor defense uh, has been put forward by some of the defendants saying, hey, we, you know, we, we were doing this for the good of the country. Uh, we developed this, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the firefighting foam, uh, but the, and, and they're trying to use that as a defense that the Department of Justice is, is not, uh, is, is opposing that. And we don't feel that that will have any legs or, or help them in, in, uh, in any defense in their case. And Paul serves as the primary liaison with the Department of Justice on behalf of the court, on behalf of the multi-district litigation. Now that's a term I should explain. This is not a class action, technically. It is a, 
because although the great majority of plaintiffs are municipalities uh, whose water or water districts whose water have been impacted, there are other types of plaintiffs such as airports, such as uh, Nantucket Airport, which we represent, um, uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania Airport. There are some a number of housing complexes which provide their own water supply. Uh, curiously enough, a number of school districts, especially in New York State, that provide their own water supply. Um, so it's tough to classify everybody being in the same class. Um, the importance of that is, so if there, when there is a settlement and for you to qualify for reimbursement, um, you need to be a, a plaintiff. In a class action, people could kind of wait at the edges and, and come in at the end of the case and say, oh, I'm a member of that class too, I should qualify. Um, so this isn't that type of case. It's, it's what's called an MDL, a multi-district litigation. And the multi-districts are where all the cases started and, and are, were eventually uh, removed to the federal uh, court in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, next slide, please. These are some of the uh, legislation. and this actually needs to be updated a little bit on the basis of the infrastructure bill that came out a week and a half ago. Um, we, another thing we feel strongly about that we bring to the table as part of our, our service to you at no additional cost is we maintain a, a full-time lobbying footprint uh, in Washington, D.C., keeping our eyes open for developments in the infrastructure bill and the Build Back Better bill and in PFAS uh, legislation. Um, to see whether or not um, there are any chances for, for grant opportunities that we could identify for you and help you uh, go after in addition to monies uh, that could come to you from the litigation. So um, we find that we think that's very important. We offer that at, at no additional cost to our, to our current clients. Um, there are $10 billion included in uh, the infrastructure bill that was signed uh, two weeks ago, Friday, um, or you know, a week and a half ago. Uh, we don't know how the EPA is going to administer that yet. Uh, we figure it'll be in some type of grant program, but they're, they're, they haven't promulgated that yet. Um, but we will keep an eye on it on behalf of our clients. Um, and uh, uh, the EPA has been advised both through that legislation and other legislation coming out of Congress to take a more activist role towards PFAS. Uh, the importance of that is that right now, although the maximum contaminant level in Massachusetts is 20 parts per trillion, about one drop in 30 Olympic swimming pools, uh, the advisory by the federal government is 70 parts per trillion. We feel that will drop uh, significantly uh, during this term, during this administration, and whether or not they make it mandatory uh, it remains to be seen, but we will keep an eye on that. Um, from a political viewpoint, there's also a lot of chatter uh, behind the scenes, both uh, in, in, in DEP and other agencies, that um, 20 parts per trillion is too high. Uh, there are scientists out there that feel that anything above, and, and advise anything above, above one part per trillion is uh, dangerous and they are advocating very strongly to drop, uh, to, to drop the maximum contaminant level. Other states have already done it. New York is at 10 parts per trillion. Maine is at 10 parts per trillion. Maine tried to go to one, uh, but they, they stopped at 10. Uh, New Jersey is at 13 parts per trillion for PFAS and 14 parts per trillion for PFOA. Um, and, and other states are following suit um, as we speak, Illinois, Colorado. Um, so, the significance of that is uh, a couple uh, is if that was to change between now and any settlement in the lawsuit <clears throat> that is that is the criteria we would use on your behalf uh, in helping you to determine what your your mitigation and your remediation is uh, secondly if our vision of the of the trust fund that would be set up with a settlement or a judgment after trial uh, remains um, we feel there could be multiple bites at the apple going forward. The asbestos trust fund was set up in 1988, and you know there are still you know people returning to that um, on, on more than one, more than one occasion. Uh, so these are all things we would keep you in touch with. This is what we feel you know makes us different. Uh, in Massachusetts, um, you know clearly a local contact. Um, 
you know, you're, you're, we're a little unusual that you guys know me pretty well, but also the KP uh, contact. But we, then we scale up very qu quickly to a national level law firm with experience in these cases coming up on 30 years. Um, we've got uh, our dedicated environmental uh, department with tremendous, tremendous associate attorneys that do great research, our communication. Uh, well, with that, you don't have a problem because you can just have Chief uh, Chardonnay stop me while I'm driving through town. Um, <laughs> all of these other uh, uh, resources. One thing we do bring also bring to the table, and I don't think you'd need be, because I you've got a pretty sophisticated administration over there, but we do have a crisis communications department. Some of our clients um, have needed as time went on uh, help either dealing with the media or dealing with uh, requests uh, for, for information from constituents and ratepayers. And we've been uh, successful in helping them develop answers, develop narrative. You know, in certain situations, I've handled it. I've, I've handled media requests for some of our clients uh, and dealt with it. I just got a call before I um, um, before I came on with you guys to to go on a radio show in uh, on behalf of one of our clients in Mississippi on Thursday afternoon. So, um, so between the history of the law firm, the economic strength of the law firm, allowing us to offer the, uh, uh, the you know, the, the, the ability to, to eat all the costs, um, the, 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 the Paul Napoli and, and, and the other quality of the attorneys that are here uh, and him being on the executive committee, along with the scientific uh, background that uh, a lot of our people have, uh, with our lobbying footprint in, with our communications footprint, we do feel we're a full service law firm. And it's a group I'm very, very happy and, and proud to be involved with. And, you know, we'd like to help help you guys out as, as we go forward. I think there's just one more slide after this. How do you like that? <laughs> I forgot that. I actually forgot that was the last slide. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. funny. Right. So, um, Margaret and Hank, what are next steps for the Berlin board for this? Just to basically say, yes, go. We want to participate. Margaret, if there's something you need to sign off of. I, I've registered the town, but I do believe there's going to be additional participation forms. Okay. Correct, Hank? There is, and I, can, I can, and I didn't want to gild the lily or jump the gun. I can send that over once we get off. Um, it's a contract kind of specific to Massachusetts that um, that we work through with KP on behalf of their clients, uh, and we will keep KP on your behalf uh, informed of all we do. Um, there's no additional cost uh, to you, uh, for us or them, uh, for them to participate in this. Uh, and uh, so I can send that over. Uh, to Margaret uh, probably this evening, you know, before before it gets too late, and then yeah, you, know, you could just you know take a vote and, and sign off or or you know go okay. through with your okay. desires. Right. So I think that's uh, Margaret. Do you see it as potentially next week, a next yeah. week agenda item? Yes, right. that's what Respect. I see. Yeah. yeah, I see that for next yeah. week. Um, and I know Hank is here for another purpose. Yes. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering if you'd like, there's really no good segue into this next piece, but if you'd like to go ahead and, and uh, speak to so your presentation. I'm, I, I'm, I'm late. I'm late with this. Uh, when I was cleaning out my offices at, well, at the end of the year and, uh, and then actually it had to wait till I got back from DC. I found uh, boxes of, of things that I, I should have given to out years ago. But so in my last, not, it wasn't my, clearly my last deployment. When I was deployed in 2015, uh, I had flags flown for all of the towns I represented at Kandahar Airfield in, in Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, I had these certificates done up and I had meant to come back and, uh, and present them uh, probably at the following Memorial Days or Veterans Day. And what happened is, is anybody's guess. They got packed away in a box in the back of my office, uh, of my Clinton office. And uh, when I was cleaning it out, when I got back in, uh, in, Mar in the beginning of April, I found them and, and there you go. So I, I would wish I could have been there to present these in person at some point. Uh, but 
I just wanted you to know that uh, then and now, uh, wherever I went in the world, I, I always carried you guys with me. And and I knew I had your support and your thoughts as, as well as my family. So uh, I would like on behalf of, uh, of the U.S. Army uh, to uh, uh, present this uh, uh, to the town of uh, Berlin and uh, with with deep and, and affectionate thoughts. So oh, uh, okay. thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Hank. That's sweet. And, and obviously, I'm sorry. I'm sorry yes. it took almost six years to get to it. Okay. It's okay. We appreciate you, sir, your service, and we definitely appreciate you staying safe and coming back to us. Yeah. So, so, you know, thank you. Oh, that was nice. Very nice. Very nice. So, where do we get my honor? Where do we get to post that, Margaret? Do we want to post it in the front of the building, up in our office that no one really goes into? I mean, we'll have to find a sp uh, space because I want folks to see it. Yes, and we could put it out on our website and on yes. our Facebook page as well. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Nye. It was you, awesome Hank. to thank see you, you again. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's we'll been be a back pleasure to be in your company again. I'll get right. that document out to Margaret and awesome. stay in touch. Thank, thank you so great. much. Yep. Thank you, Hank. Have a great night. Soon. All the best. You too. All right. So let's see. Is Sandra in the audience? Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Oh, there she is. She is the infamous 1870 Town Hall. Jerry was looking for a person and it's a building. So <laughs> we could bring Sandra up. Oh, and hey, in the spirit of the season. Hey, look, there's my Grinch mug. So just <laughs> say it. <laughs> Sandra. I just have my regular water. There you go. Hey, Sandra, welcome back. Thank you. All right. Um, <coughs> so, Margaret, you were kind enough to edit up the document for us. Um, yeah, I can I can put it up on the screen if you'd like with the red lines and you can discuss them um, if you'd like to do that. Sure. sure. Okay. This is the only page that has some proposed red lines. Um, these red lines would pertain to um, nonprofit use of the building for community-wide free uh, public events. Um, and um, they, where, a, where the board could choose to waive or reduce fees um, upon request, um, no one would be exempt from uh, filing the building use form or the building use application. Everyone would have to uh, continue to do that. Um, I have, uh, I've shared this with Sandra, um, so um, I would ask for her thoughts as well on these, on these red lines. Um, trying to keep it simple, um, but at the same time, make sure there's not an, an avalanche of requests coming into the board, um, you know, because things might be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. So I'd appreciate your feedback on these red lines. Scott, Chris? Scott, Chris, Sandra? Uh, I, I I thought they were fine. I thought they got to the intent without having sort of major reworks of things. I agree that as select board, I think we're in that position uh, that I don't want Sandra or, or someone there to uh, in that position to be in of trying to decide what is worthy enough to be waived and what is not right. because you know we we do reduce revenue of 1870 Town Hall when we waive these fees, uh, and so I don't want us to sit here. I I would hate it that she. That, that anyone in the position waves it too often and then suddenly we're on their case for doing good but not raising enough money. I think it puts us in the position of, of being able to make that call and hopefully we remember if we make 20 votes during the year to waive the fees that at the end of the year when there's not enough money in that fund go, why is there not enough money in the fund? It's because we waive the fees. Mm -hmm. At the same time, right now, I think we're in a position where we want to encourage the use of the building. We, I think there's a lot of things like this particular uh, mm -hmm. event coming up this weekend where I think we want to encourage it to be used. And I think it is, right. is worthy of having the fees waived. Yeah. My only, Go ahead. My only comment or fear is that you guys will be inundated with people coming to you saying, you know, well, I'm a town committee or I'm a town group and why do I have to pay this fees? So I don't know if it makes more sense to do an even more reduced rate for those folks or, um, uh, hmm. you know, it, I just feel like it might, become a, the select board has to make this decision every time someone wants to use the building. That's a, a committee in town. Um, I, that's my only fear that we'll be, you know. 
uh, and I but think if we if that money. if that if that fear gets realized, that we might use that to reduce the fee schedule or or, or big a broader category. I think because we're we're opening this door a crack, and I agree, there's a chance that it gets opened again too far. Yeah. But that uh, uh, again, I hate to have you or the one making all this. I think you could say, look, to do it, you're going to have to get the select board to do it, and. The last four people who asked for it, they told no for these reasons. You're unlikely to get it, and maybe discourage some of those. Or we open our own floodgate. If the sled is <laughs> waving it all the time, then you're right. We're, we're going to have that problem. Yeah. But I mean, it's pretty specific. If you look, it's requests by nonprofits. Well, I mean, the nonprofits are pretty much in the center of the town um, right. for that, you know, and uh, a free uh, public event. And then, uh, you know, yeah. So, Sandra, you know, to your question of, Oh, well, I'm a nonprofit. Okay. Show me, you know, show me that you're a nonprofit. And I think there was something, yeah. And then there's the, the next line down about, um, you know, it won't raise, won't, we won't waive fees for events that charge a fee yes. or there's sales of tickets. So I, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, we're doing this by adding all these, um, you know, caveats to it. Should I have a question? So the last sentence in blue. Um, should it be added uh, that the select board would not waive rental fees for any for-profit events that charge admission? I, I assume it would be a for-profit um, event the, the if you're issue. charging admission. No. Well, so some I, I nonprofits know. will charge an admission because the whole point is to, you know, like if you're raising funds for a scholarship or you're raising right. funds, you know, to offset the cost right. of the event or something like that, you, oh. you may. What, and, what about, charging. for example, um, Link? Uh, if they were charging an admission fee to fundraise? I think if they're charging admission raise and fundraise, the, the town should, because we're not asking a huge amount of money uh, that, that I think those get, because every theater group is nonprofit and they charge tickets too. And so again, mm -hmm. I think as we're trying to say that okay. events that are free and open to the public, are, we, we could consider, but it doesn't require us to waive the fee. Right. Okay. You know, and, and I think, you know, Margaret, you have made this point all along with all the documents that we update and change. All these are living and breathing documents. So, they are. Um, you know, when the first one comes through, we're going to meet back here on a Monday night and we're going to chat and decide and pull up the document and go, oh, okay, I guess we need to tweak this line or, oh, mm -hmm. that paragraph didn't work. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we had we had this. We thought it was set. This event came up. It caused us to rethink and redo. So, you know, I think if we just go in it with that mentality of it's it, this is a living document, then we will figure it out as as items are brought to us. Okay, good. And, and this at least presents a framework for yes. the board to ask questions of the requester. You know, Correct. that way. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll stop sharing. So are you looking for a motion, Margaret? Um, oh, well, before we do that, so Sandra, are there any other concerns, questions that you have about the document? Um, you know, kind of like no. willing to willing to take the ride with us to figure it out <laughs> as we go along. I mean, it's totally yes, the boss. <laughs> it's totally your call. I just, yeah. you know, I I know that the building is supposed to be self-sustained. My yeah. pay comes from that that. The, you know, the electric and the pest control and all those things are, um, you know, coming from whatever comes in for the building. Right. So I just, you know, well, I want to make sure people really understand that as well. Like, you know, maybe even ask for a donation from some of these places versus saying no charge at all. And if they want to give us 25 or 50 or something mm -hmm. towards it, it's helpful. And I think, feel like that should definitely be expressed to those groups, you know. No, I mean, Sandra, I not Go ahead. Go ahead. And everybody, you know, wants to support these groups. I've been part of a lot of these groups throughout the years. I totally get it. it I totally understand a lot of the things you're trying to do are for the town and mm -hmm. are for, you know, to keep the community going. But there are costs involved in things. And some of that does need to, you know, unfortunately, we have to collect from somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what, and, and Sandra, I ask you to keep us accountable uh, as well. So when Chris and Scott and I sit here and we go fee wave happy, um, you know, every once in a while, stick your hand up and go, hey, <laughs> we've had 15 events and you guys have waived 14 of them. You're like, oh, 
sorry, because I think it's going to be easy for us to probably lose track, but where you're, you know, you're the gal now for the, you know, for 1870, um, you know, don't be, af be afraid to say, mm, I got a question and we'll all be like, yeah, you're right. So thank you for that. And that's why, and that's why we have a policy. Yep. You know, absolutely. Okay. So Margaret, are you looking for a uh, board vote? Yes, please. See, I think you need a vote on changing right. this form and a vote to waive that fee for the yes. Lions Club yep. gingerbread yep. house. Yep. Both. Yep. Yep. So okay. I'll do the, the first motion to approve the changes to the form uh, as, as outlined by the town administrator. Second. All right. And again, Margaret, thank you. And Sandra, thank you for all your input for making this document work. Uh, Stone Eye. Hawkins Eye. Keith Eye. All right, one down, one to go. Uh, I would like to make a motion that we waive the $75 fee for the Lions Club Gingerbread House event. That's the one this weekend, right? Yes. You got it. Yes. So Andre, I, you've, received the, you've received the building use application, correct? I have um, not. Um, there was somebody supposed to be finishing part of it. I have okay. not seen it, but I also have not gotten the mail this week. I got okay. the first check that I was asked to hold, which I have right, done nothing right. with, which I'll okay. return. Um, right, but so I don't, I have not seen the form. Okay, so so um, I know oh. somebody was filling in the last part of it that someone else right. didn't know. So I'll make sure I get that. Is, is well, that assuming the Lion Club fills out a form to request the use of the building this weekend. Yeah. Is, that, event um, is, that, is that why Mary Reddington is here? Because for some reason her I name is so. like swirling around yes. in my head. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. So, do, uh, Mary, are there any questions that you have? If you know, if you do, raise your hand. We'll bring you up to the big table. Oh, we'll bring you up to the big table anyway. I guess you're coming up to the big table, anyways. It's like Thanksgiving. You can come sit at the big table. I prefer <laughs> sitting in the other room with the kids. It's much more fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mary, Mary, you, your mic is on. You can speak. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. I appreciate you guys taking this up. I understand Sandra's concerns and I don't, I don't, I don't think the floodgates are going to open like you guys think. I think what'll happen is it'll be, you know, old home day. It'll be a Memorial Day parade. It'll be, you know, the, the three or four events that we're trying to get the town going on anyway, but I could very well be wrong. <laughs> In which case, I will make sure the word is spread around that the building needs to be self-sustaining, including Sandra. I'll make sure that the word gets out there to my constituents. I, I appreciate you guys acting before this weekend. Thank you. <laughs> so Mary, are you yeah. the person in charge of um, filling out the application? Oh, no, no, that would be too <laughs> like easy. That. that would be too no. easy, Peg. Uh, no, I, I'll communicate to the lions the, about the meeting okay. tonight and get somebody to finish that up lickety split um, or as fast as we go in Berlin and uh, well Mary <laughs> tell them tell the tell Dave and Mr. Sharon either that form comes in or there'll be no frosty waving in the center of town this year just saying so there you <laughs> <Okay>. go <laughs> all right thank you guys awesome all right so are we good Margaret are we good on this Sandra are we good yeah good. awesome all right. Thank you. And, and really, Sandra, come back anytime. Um, thank you. And, uh, you know, definitely happy to have you and uh, you. look forward to working with you on this. Thank you all. Have a great night. You betcha. Thanks, you too. Sandra. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Mike. All right. Mrs. Nardowitz, we are up to our town administrator report. Nice summary that you sent out. Um, oh, my God. And, and <laughs> email. Like a recap. All right, so um, there is going to be a new uh, Neshoba Valley Regional Dispatch District Executive Director. Her name is Anne uh, Camaro. Um, she's going to be starting by January 1st. And um, once she starts, I'm going to invite her to a select board meeting to introduce her to the board. Um, and she actually comes to the district from the city of Cambridge as Cambridge's um, de uh, deputy executive director of their dispatch operations. So she is well versed in this um, and experienced. So I look forward to introducing her to you. 
Um, we are almost um, at a point where we're ready to ratify the dispatcher's um, collective bargaining agreement. We came to very reasonable uh, reasonable resolutions. I can't I can't share everything yet because it's not finalized, but as soon as it is, I will be sure to share those updates with you. I happen to be um, on the negotiating team uh, for the district on that contract. Um, personnel HR, there's an awful lot going on. So the personnel committee, first of all, is continuing its review and updates of the draft policy manual that, that Sandy provided. They made some good headway um, at their last workshop. They have dedicated workshop for this. And I think they're probably gonna have to have more because it's a lot of work. Um, and then um, I have submitted uh, to them uh, my expressed interest in proposing new staffing. Um, this list is not all inclusive, but um, it includes a combined highway um, facilities and laborer position. Um, an appropriation already exists for a portion of, for half of this position and the benefits for the position. I would like to combine it um, so as to mitigate um, the impacts of adding a full new staff person, just kind of an incremental increase in staffing after 20 years in that department, a part-time highway administrative assistant, which would be a non-benefited part-time uh, position that would provide some basic administrative support um, to the highway department and facilities, a cemetery superintendent, and this would pick up where we last left off, um, uh, right now, as you know, it is a contract um, that we have in place with Bob Guild for cemetery superintendent and burials um, duties. Uh, I've informed the personnel committee that this will require a meeting with Barry um, on behalf of the cemetery commission. And lastly, um, a part-time Community Preservation Act admin assistant. This is also a position that has been budgeted from CPA funds effective this year. Um, I've been in communication with Tim Wheeler about this and we I expect to uh, discuss um, the uh, duties of this part-time non-benefited position with him so we can be sure that we cover all of the, the primary functions. Um, as you know, I'm concerned about the amount of procurements that have, you know, that we've seen um, increase um, due to CPA. I think it's wonderful, um, but it has, it has um, expanded the workloads um, several fold. And then finally, a permanent part-time conservation agent. We have a temporary one in place, and now we need to look at um, funding for um, a permanent uh, part-time non-benefit conservation agent. Next up, um, Jill Gallant Shaw of Cook and Company is going to come to your December 13th meeting to talk with you about the next steps in invoking chapter 32B sections 21 through 23. You know, the board adopted these sections, you'll recall, um, but did not take steps to invoke them. So there are real um, there are specific steps in order to invoke this. The board may or may not be interested in doing that. So she's gonna kind of brief you um, again uh, and review those steps with you. Current procurements projects, we've got the ALS study out, the um, RFQ was sent to several vendors, the submission deadline on that is, the submission deadline for quotes is December 16th. Um, I've drafted a, an RFR and scope of work for to put um, AV equipment in the cable, um, in the uh, meeting rooms 218 and 227 to provide for hybrid uh, meetings and for remote broadcasting capability. Um, the supplement to the Bullet House Structural Survey went out to Tim uh, Wolhuter, or the notice to proceed went out to Tim, Tim Wolhuter today. Um, so we're expecting that that project deadline would be by March 31st. The Bullet House Sill Work project is nearly complete um, and it's awaiting inspection. And um, we've I've started working with recreation on uh, phased recreation court upgrades. Um, the recreation committee feels it would be more cost effective to do the project in favor, phases and, and contract out separately for the different components of the project, um, which um, I, I'm beginning to work the, uh, on the scope of work for, uh, for the asphalt portion. Highway is going to assist in removing the fencing. And then uh, finally, um, uh, Krista Collins at the Sudbury Valley Trustees has prepared a draft expression of interest 
uh, for a potential MVP grant for a large amount of, of funding, additional funding for the lower property. So um, I know Carolyn and uh, Maddie, the new uh, temporary conservation agent are reviewing the expression of interest um, uh, to mark it up and get that to the state for review in the in what they call the community one stop. Um, I have to file a report this week on coronavirus relief relief funds that closeout is due by I believe it's Thursday of this week, uh, uh, Friday of this week. The, we are going to be holding a virtual FY23 budget kickoff meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, to go over all the budget packet documentation and the expectations of this budget process. And that's what I have for now. So, Margaret, I had a question on the um, down under. Should we wait for old business to talk about the, the skating? Yes, that's on the, yeah, that's on under okay. old business. Yep. Okay. All right. That's, that's all I have in my report for this week. Margaret, is there a time when, I mean, I had a, a suggestion for something that perhaps we could put in the budget for next okay. year. Okay. Is this a good time or do you want me to wait till? What about, would you like to bring that up under board questions, comments and liaison reports? I was going to. Oh, there you go. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mrs. Nadowitz. Any questions for uh, Margaret there, Mr. Scott? No, I'm good. Okay, all right. Um, so under old business, uh, we'll come down and we'll sign Chief's plan. Uh, so next up, Margaret, is the review of our town letter relinquishing control of the $20,000 earmark grant to 19 Carter. I don't know that I need to share this unless you want. Okay, so this is a communication to the Executive Office of Health and Human Services. Um, and more directly, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs um, in Boston. Um, as you know, the legislature voted an earmark grant to 19 Carter for um, improvements to the Berlin Senior Center. And so there's been, uh, there have been email communications back and forth about how to manage this. Um, and um, the bottom line is the town is not awarded the grant and I have no interest in receiving the funds in our town treasury or no intent to receive the towns in our town treasury or administer the grant in any way. Therefore, um, EHS, Executive Office of Health and Human Services recommended that the town relinquish control of the earmark grant to 19 Carter for the purposes that they've, for, for their purposes. So this is the letter that, that memorializes it. So do you need a board vote? Yes, or, please. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, is there a motion? Or further discussion? All right. Second. All right, any just more discussion? All right, I see you no. Know. Um, so Stone Eye. Hawkins Eye. Keith, I. There you go, Margaret. Thank you again for you. all your work with that. We appreciate you. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, and then next up is the <clears throat> BMS lease agreement. That's with uh, Town Council for review. Did it I is see in that Town last? Council's hands. Okay. Um, you know, Bob um, was very good to actually provide some, you know, meaningful feedback to the town on the lease agreement. Mm -hmm. um, yes, town council is going to be reviewing the indemnification language. Um, yes, improvements and maintenance should be based on the terms of the regional agreement. However, the regional agreement also says um, that improvements, uh, what does it say? Improvements, I took language right from the agreement. The town shall be responsible for any additional amount beyond $5,000 dollars for each each separate improvement. Bob essentially says it's not realistic. They have to take care of improvements as they happen and they would use their funds to do so. So I, I've suggested to Bob that we have a meeting to kind of collaborate on putting the rest of this together um, to make sure that it's in a form that's agreeable to both the school district and the town. Awesome. All right. So is there do we need to uh come down and sign anything with that when it's ready or is it just ready to roll once you get it back? I'll bring you, I'll bring you back updates as I hear back from uh, town council and um, I would welcome a board um, designee to sit in on this, um, this meeting to go over the lease agreement. And so I'll let you know what I hear back from Bob on that. I was, I was just gonna offer 
it, okay. if you need anyone, I would be happy to help out. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, so down to the discussion of town insurance for the use of the town pond for skating. And for those, just mm -hmm. to make it clear, the town pond is the small body of water behind the tennis courts uh, on, what is that, South Street. Okay. So I had a question, um, and so I've been following some of the emails back and forth, and I uh, swung by this weekend. There is a sign up there on one of the poles, uh, basically stating, you know, like thin ice, skate at your own risk. Um, I think that was one question for signs. It's a yellow sign. Mm -hmm. And then I had to chuckle because there's also a sign that says, uh, you know, use of uh, motorized vehicles beyond this point is prohibited. And I'm thinking, well, someone tell that to all the people who run the snowmobiles across the pond when it's frozen. Um, you know, so there are those two signs up there for that. But I had a question um, also in that email. Somebody had talked about or asked about how do we make sure that the ice is safe uh, for folks to go out there. Uh, I don't know who's going to do that. Um, I can't see it falling under highway. I don't know if it would fall. I wish Chief was still here. Chief Clark was still here. You know, we can talk to him about it. It's not <laughs> freezing yet. Um, does that fall under fire, uh, safety, um, fire marshal, uh, or? Hey, Rick. Do you remember uh, when the sign went up? It went up. Uh, it was With you and I and Lisa. So yeah. it was, it was, it was pre Scott. So two years ago. Chief yep. Steve had it put up because he was concerned about the fact that yes. there is an area where the water's always moving. Yep, all the way down it, the end. And yep. it and it doesn't freeze. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so hmm. mm -hmm. so I've, I don't... I've actually sent this entire email thread to Chief Clark and I've asked him to provide feedback. Um okay. I, I I think it's good, it would be good to get his his yeah, thoughts I, and his the skating rink is not going to cover the whole surface. And so it's and it's going to I assumed, and maybe I'm, I'm assuming wrong, but that it will have some boundaries to it, and hopefully the boundaries won't include the area of the pond that's constantly open. Yeah, yeah, because that's the so if the tennis courts is here and the pond is but, here, it's the one way in the back towards the field um, that that's where the drain is, and it's always then um, the nice thing. God forbid anybody falls through, you're probably not going to get you're not going to drown. You're going to get stuck in cow poop. And, uh, but you know, it's not <laughs> you, uh, but it's not like it's a, you know, 50 foot pond, um, you know, depth that we have to worry about. So, um, but it's, so, nothing's um, freezing yet. So mm -hmm. flooding, flooding the ice with a skim coat of water. I'm not sure if recreation, um, is, is able to do that or they would need the, um, they would need assistance from, from highway or fire to yeah. do that. Um, and then, in this in this email thread, there's also noted that some vegetation should be removed um, so they wouldn't mm. interfere with the ice service. I'm going to refer that to Concom, but I do have yeah. a feeling that where the vegetation is, or where the bulk of the vegetation is, it's probably in the area that wouldn't be skated on anyway. So I'm going to I'll forward that to Concom to make sure that that's that, okay. and that's not a natural pond, right? That is that is that is made. It's a man made. I think it's a man made. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, but it still becomes a, it still becomes yeah. a, what do you call it? A, yep. So, so it's existed here's long enough. <laughs> yeah. So here's another question about that to bring up um, is I was standing there looking at the pond and envisioning, you know, kids skating and hot cocoa. Mm, I have a feeling that inevitably somebody's going to want to start a fire, um, you know, keep the little toes and hands warm. So a, is that town property? Is that school property? And B, what would be all the requirements if somebody wanted to do that? It's it, they'd have town to go through property. Fire. Okay. Yeah, that's town property, and they would have to they would have to consult with the fire. I'm, I'm they would have to consult with the fire department. Any fire on town property, I'm not I'm not sure it would be allowed, but maybe with fire supervision, they could do something. <laughs> okay. No, I was just thinking as I was standing there that somebody is going to say, hey, let's build a fire, um, you know, for that. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll see what Chief Clark and company comes back at and, um, you know, they can uh, work it out with REC and we'll go from there and hope that the town, uh, hope that it doesn't freeze for a while and that we have a mild winter. All right. Um, so next up, 
under new business, we talked a little bit about this uh, last week when I was chatting about the food pantry and then Scott, you kind of, um, you know, hopped on it as well. And then Margaret, you brought it up too that, you know, maybe COA could benefit of it uh, to discuss potential use of the old highway barn for historical and or food pantry options, um, um, you know, for the town. I mean, yeah, this goes to one of my potential peeves that will not go away 50 years from now. I'll mention at town meeting, be the much that people go, oh my God, this is Scott again. Um, that uh, we, we had town meeting passed $4 million for a highway barn. So highway could sell it all their stuff into one building. Yeah. And then that building got redesigned where it doesn't meet all the needs of the highway department and they need other spaces. But they have several spaces around town. I was wondering if they could consolidate down to just maybe two buildings instead of four. Uh, and free up space that could be used for other things. Like when we were talking about the food pantry, it occurred to me, a, a nice one-story building, easy drive up, a mm. big open space. It just, and it has a, uh, it, it, it was a horrible uh, office space for highway, but might be if cleaned up and not used for storage of chemicals, a decent office space for, for uh, uh, the food pantry. And then just in my wild dreams where that building is 400,000 square feet, uh, that, that there's enough room that uh, the food pantry would have ample room for their stuff and there would be room for some uh, historical storage. Again, it's just an idea. I think it's worthy mm -hmm. of exploring. Um, uh, and it sounds from, from some of the updates we've seen that, that there's at least looking at like what is currently in the building and can it go somewhere else? Yeah, I should have, I, I expect um, that Fred's, Fred's on it and um, he's doing an inventory and a condition assessment. Um, and an assessment of um, of what could be disposed of and what needs to be kept. So he's doing that, and I expect to have that by the end of the week. Nice. Is, is the um, COA van, is that where it's parked? Oh, Margaret froze. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. All right. So you're moving, no. Chris. Yeah, yeah, moving. Yeah, that's, that's all right. So yes, we're all moving. So does anyone know, is that where COA, is, the van is parked? Because I, I don't see it around town. Margaret, is, is Margaret move. Margaret, yes, move yes, ahead. Yes, okay, all right, yes, you're unfrozen. All right, my, let's go. My internet connection is unstable, so if okay. I yeah. lose you. We got you. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, my question was, is that where the van is parked? The Council on Aging van is that's the, the, the Yeah, that's the other thing. So I, you know, we, we do need to consider a place for the van, a place for the van. <laughs> Have you been that's in the, the building that's parked in right now? Have you been in the building, uh, Scott? I have not been in the building. Uh, when I was doing last year, when I was doing the, my sort of summary of buildings, um, I had a series of photographs that Richard Smith was able to take as he was, uh, and he and the highway chief at the time, and I think a couple others walked around from building to building doing some assessments. And so I have seen the building via photographs, and obviously I've driven by it a couple of times as well. <clears throat> it, I've only been in it, you know, a few years ago when I first got on the board. Um, but it's pretty small, I think. It's not. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm hoping, I, I mean, I, as I was saying, in my fantasy world, it's 400,000 square feet. It's <laughs> not a giant building, but I think it, it is likely, it is significantly bigger than the space that uh, the food pantry is using now as their main space mm -hmm. and would at least consolidate them from four or five different small spaces all over the downstairs of that building to one sort of nicer space that could have some, I mean, we could put some nice work into it. I mean, I don't think it's even expensive work. I mean, racks uh, and aisleways, so it could look sort of grocery store like, make it easier to both store things and pick things up. And, and you know, uh, uh, I think some paint and other stuff, the building could be made usable. Yeah. And, and as you said last week, or Scott, I think in your email, you know, this is nothing that's going to be turned around, even though Fred gives us his inventory on Friday. Right. It's going to be done by Monday of next week. You know, it's going to be a process because as you free up one spot, this spot, then this spot goes here. And then, oh, look, well, we have a building. Well, get rid of the stuff in this building and maybe the van can go over there. So it's going to be yeah. a lot of this for a while. And, and I, we might be after we have fresh assessment, if we think we can get most of the stuff out of there and it's just a matter of figuring out the last couple of pieces, I think mm -hmm. it's worth reaching out to, to Mary and the food pantry saying, do you think this space meets your needs? Because I'd also yeah. hate to do all of this stuff and have them go, right. oh my goodness, it, it has this fatal flaw that none of the three of us know about because yeah. we don't operate the food pantry and right, we're right. not doing them a favor at all. So, right. yeah. Or it's, you know, Margaret, as you said, you know, maybe it's council on aging. 
you know, maybe right. they could take use of the space. Or yep. as you, you know, mentioned, Scott, maybe the stuff that's in the old fire, uh, you know, fire barn, right. uh, you know, some of that stuff could, yep. could come up based, yeah, yeah, based on the, the inventory that June sent forth, you know, right. last week. So again, it'll be a lot of this, but um, you know what, we've started. So kudos to everybody involved. And thank you, Mr. Fred, for yep. taking care of that. And it is declutter December, so you know we can start. Ah, going. this is true. Right. This is it. You are supposed to throw. What did what did one, thing one, one thing away? One well. One thing away in the first. Away. Two things on the second. Yep. But, yeah. Yep. So, are you kidding? We'll have the entire town cleaned out by the thirty-first. Uh, just put put a dumpster next to the uh, two old <laughs> firehouses there, and there. I mean, not I'm talking about historically. I was up there helping them move stuff in, and there are clearly things that have been abandoned for years that have you know no mm -hmm. useful life anywhere. That, yeah. that could mm -hmm. uh, free up some space. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We're moving. We're moving yep. in a shaken. So, you know, yay. Yay us and we'll just keep going. Yep. All right. So we are down to boards, questions, comments, liaison, updates. Chris, since you had one, you want to go first? Sure. Um, and it may have some, I, I don't know if there's anything in the Berlin Memorial School lease agreement that addresses landscaping. But that was my question, was landscaping for town buildings. And mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, highways pretty much got their hands full. Um, but if there was some somebody that we could contract with to um, do the landscaping at the municipal building, um, Berlin Memorial, if we're responsible for that, because I don't think that they do anything uh, as far as landscaping, or not that much. Um, that's, that's something, uh, somebody had suggested it to me and I, I, I have always thought it was probably a good idea. Somebody who has background in landscaping, perhaps, mm -hmm. whether it's pruning bushes and trees or, you know, putting mulch in, um, where it's needed, um, and that kind of thing. Okay. All right. Anything else? Interesting. Just have just have some pride, yep. you know, for yeah. the buildings that we have. Uh huh. Mm hmm. All right, uh, Scott. You got anything? Uh, I'm good at this moment. All right. I just have a couple, um, and actually one we already hit on. So as I was reading the CMRPC weekly something in review. Um, there was a, uh, there's so many of them. There was a link in there about a, uh, FY22 Mass Trails grant. So I reached out to Carolyn. I'm like, is this your grant? She's like, yep. So, you know, Margaret, you had alluded yeah. to that earlier. So they're on top of that. Um, last week I had mentioned that CONCON might be bringing forth a trail, a trail cleaner upper person. Um, it's on their agenda for Wednesday. So maybe next week. We'll hear something and then uh, housekeeping now that we have Chief Shatner, uh, and that's how we have to say it, Shatner in place. Um, the, well, it's like the market basket, like you got it. Um, the town of Berlin safety page needs an update. So does that fall under Eric and his crew because it still has Tom and, yep, okay. All right, does he know? <laughs> It falls no. under his responsibility. He, he will tomorrow. <laughs> no, they actually have a person. They actually have a person who's participated in senior work tax work off in the past, who's very skilled at that. Uh, nice. And I think that he could get help from him. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then uh, obviously not up for discussion for tonight, but for next week, um, uh, as Peg was sitting around uh, in her jammy pants yesterday afternoon, did my letter to the, well, you know, it's, it's, Sunday attire, um, letter to the art, uh, item for December. So if you could take a peruse and let me know and we'll, I'll pop it on the agenda for next week and then we'll be good to go and I'll get that out. Did Jan, you send when it you, out? Did I you did, I sent it, I sent it yesterday, last night. I don't, I don't, I don't think I got it, Peg. No, oh, it resend. wasn't, it wasn't, it was not sounding familiar to me. I was just pulling oh. up to see if I missed it because I've been trying to get way, way better at least scanning my emails on a daily basis so oh. I, I i saw some an email today uh I that did. you mentioned it you mentioned it and I, and I thought well i haven't seen it no i did i sent it last night at 605 to margaret scott and christine 
It says, how do y'all, actually it says how all, should have said how do y'all, uh, not on the agenda up for discussion tomorrow, but for the following week, please review and comment so I can send it along. Do you, do you have it, uh, Scott? I, I do not have it. I just did a search <gasps> of all my emails from Peg. Really? Lies. All right. I'm forwarding it. Oh. Maybe did it send? Maybe it didn't send. I, no, no, I, I have found it. The item for uh, article in December. Yeah. It was yeah, sent 6.05 p.m. on Last Sunday. night. Yep. It is weird that it is not where I expect it to be in my. Yeah, it's entitled the article, the, again, capital T, cap, capital H, egg spells well, uh, the item article for DEC. So, Chris, I'll send it along again. It's not a big well, I'll, I can look. If I don't find it, then I'll. I'll yeah, just holler. It. Yep, just holler and I'll so, send it. For, for some reason, Chris, I I can't find it when I'm just looking at my inbox. If I search for it, I can find it. And now that I know where, like, when it was, oh, there it is again. Okay. There it is it, it again. Takes me, it, it I'm takes like me a little gremlin. Okay. I just pop up every yep. once in a while. All right. Because, well, Margaret, you got it, right? I, I, I think I got it. I remember getting it, yeah. Okay. 6.05 on Saturday? Sunday. 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 6.05 on, yep. Last All night. right. I'll look. Okay, cool. Yep. And that's all she wrote. All right. all right. Margaret, anything before we adjourn? There is no need for an executive session, so we are almost free to go. Um, I have nothing else. All right. Then I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, so moved. Up second. All right. Stone eye. Talkins eye. Keith eye. With that, we are done. Thank you. Yay. Appreciate all you do. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Good, Good meeting.